Good morning, gang. Happy Tuesday. Well, here we are back. So, uh, lots of little things to talk about this morning. Nothing that's earth shattering. I think we kind of all have a good idea what's going on. Uh, primarily the, the biggest thing that's gone on in the world is the peace talks, if you will, between Russia and Ukraine failed. So this is going to continue on longer than anybody wanted it to. Uh, the bombings continue. The, the fake news continues to come out in droves, guys. Uh, I know a lot of y'all are sending me videos and pictures and things like that. Please check into them first. There's a lot of this stuff that is complete bullshit. Uh, and a lot of it is people trying to generate sympathy to raise money for, oh, donate to this cause. Look what's happening to these kids or whatever it would be. And they're fakes. All right. So, you know, leave it, leave it to the fraudsters to try to take advantage, just like we see in the States all the time. You know, it's like, oh, this is a hurricane relief fund or something like that. And you're sending money to some faraway land, some scammer somewhere. So be careful on the videos that you watch. There's a bunch of YouTube videos showing ones now. I mean, I, the, there was the one of the planes flying in formation. I mean, I knew that one when the heartbeat was fake. Uh, but now, I guess the stories on Snake Island, some of the videos were fake that those people actually were taken alive. Uh, you know, there's just a lot of stuff. Try to, try to verify it. I mean, the mainstream media is getting caught up in this too, putting up fake pictures and everything. That picture with the woman with the bandages all over her face and everything like that. That's actually a stock photo that they've had for a few years. So uh, that's not recent. But, you know, things to pay attention to. Uh, the Russian bank has now, the Russian central bank has now forbidden any foreign investments to be taken out of the country. So you're getting this tight uh, economic fight between the West and the East. Uh, you know, not that you and I are investing in the Russian market or stuff like that, but mutual funds that you may own uh, or anything like that, they can't take money that's invested in the Russian market out and repatriate it to Germany, United States, whatever it would be. Okay. Another big thing that came out yesterday, <clears throat> this is a little shocking. Switzerland has imposed sanctions on Russia. Switzerland is notoriously neutral, guys. They don't get involved in this. And so the Swiss banks have now stopped, frozen all the Russian assets that are in the Swiss banks. A lot of Russian oligarchs have a lot of money parked in the Swiss banks. So that is a huge economic hit to Russia. Okay. So the pressure is on for this to stop. But like I said, the peace negotiations failed. Now, what does this mean for all of us? Again, futures are saying the stock market's going to drop a couple of hundred points again today. Who knows how that plays out through the day, but that's just a morning indication. Precious metals are significantly up. Gold's up over 20 bucks in the pre-market. Silver's up like 2.5%, something like that. Okay. And again, hedging on your, you know, your investments, having some hard assets is always a good thing. But I'm going to say this, the hardest asset that is going to be important for you to have is food. And I say this not as the typical prepper, you know, go buy more. Yes. Here's why. We all know all the, the fertilizer issues, okay? China, Russia being the some of the biggest fertilizer producers in the world for, and the biggest fertilizer exporters. And, oh, gee, they're not exporting any fertilizer, so that means we don't have it. Here's where the problem comes for you and me. <clears throat> there is also, because of the shipping crisis and you know, trucking issues and whatever it would be, there is a soil shortage, 
This one doesn't get talked about. A lot of farmers direct seed a lot of their crops. Sure, you go plant corn, you plant soybeans or whatever, they're direct seeded into the ground. But other things like your broccolis, your cauliflowers, uh, pick a lot of other, the farmers will start seedlings and then mechanically plant those seedlings. Tomatoes, another one, you know, for example, cucumbers, pick something. Well, the farmers are having a hard time getting st seed starting mix, okay? Now, you and I are making it out of, you know, a couple of cubes of peat moss or whatever it is. Think about if you're planting hundreds of thousands of tomato plants, okay? You need a lot of seed starting mix. I mean, a lot of it's done mechanically. You know, it's not the guy sitting in your seed cup planting little seeds. I mean, they're doing it with machinery, but they still need the medium to grow the seedlings in. They can't get it. Then if they can, if they can find whatever they can scrounge up and get, then if they are short on fertilizer, now you have the second thing. So let's say they can only plant half the crops, but then they can only fertilize half as much. So their yield now is a quarter of what they usually get. Farmer's got to stay in business. He's got to pay bills. What does that mean? The price is, he's got to sell that quarter of his yield for the same price that he normally sells his full yield. I mean, it's a four-time increase. Just, that's a hypothetical. I'm just using it as an example. You know, not saying food's going up four times. It could, sure, but that's not what I'm saying. So it becomes imperative that we start thinking of alternative ways to eat. Now, you all know me talking about growing food and everything like that. That's possible for a lot of people. That's not for others, depending on where you live. You know, you live on the 17th floor in a skyscraper somewhere. You don't really have the chance to plant a garden. Okay. So you've got to start coming up with other ways to do it. Now, vegetables, why stuff like that? Go out and buy your canned vegetables. Sure. Okay. But how many of us have been to the store and found that totally gone? You know, you want tomatoes or corn or broccoli or whatever it is, and it ain't there. Well, okay, then your other option is to buy it fresh and can it yourself because the prices are going to go up. There is no doubt whatsoever. So if you can can your vegetables, freeze your vegetables, do whatever. And I say vegetables for a reason. Because if you go back throughout history, you know, meat used to be the Sunday meal. <laughs> the rest of the week, it was vegetables and potatoes. Okay? And you had meat once a week. In an SHTF situation, which we could be heading into very quickly here, meat's going to be a luxury. You know, the, the meat and potatoes for dinner every night that we've all got accustomed to, you know, you're going to be happy to have any food. And if somebody puts a plate of beans in front of you, when you're hungry, you'll eat it. You know, all these people, oh, I want organic and I don't like this. Or When you're hungry, you'll eat anything. Okay, simple as that. So, you know, start ramping up your stock ups on the produce that you can get that you can store somehow. China's doing it. Why has China got more than 50% of the grain in the world in storage right now? What do they know that we don't? Okay, what are they trying to do? You know, Ukraine, Russia, why is Russia not exporting as much of its grain? They're keeping it back. You know, think about stuff like a loaf of bread. Now, most of us don't have the ability to grow a wheat field. Okay, so, you know, what do you need to store? You need to either store wheat berries or you need to store flour. Because, you know, one of the great comfort foods is a hot piece of bread with some butter on it. Okay, y'all like, have, you know, having bread and butter with your dinner or whatever, mop up the gravy from whatever, a sandwich, a hamburger or whatever. It all takes bread. How much flour do you have? Because you, you'd eat a lot. Go, 
I mean, make a loaf of bread and see how much flour you use. You use quite a bit, okay? But find some recipes for flour, for bread, and practice a few of them. Make three or four, say, for example, and see which ones you like. You know, try a white bread, try a rye bread, try a wheat bread, try a sourdough bread, because you may have the recipe, but if you don't like it, eh, you're not going to eat it as much, okay? Still, it's food. You'll eat it, okay? But you gotta, you got to put some joy in your life with all of this. Grow and learn how to make what will give you a little bit of comfort. Because if this whole Ukraine-Russia thing with the peace talks failing gets bigger, we're in trouble. Now, there is one bright spot. And I'm going to say, you guys are going to be shocked. I'm going to say this. Zelensky came out yesterday and asked the U.S. to impl um, um, uh, implore a no-fly zone over Ukraine. Okay? doesn't sound like it's a big deal. You know, for mental midgets like Adam Kinzinger, it sounds like a good idea. This is what you're not going to believe me, hear, hear me saying. I will give the Biden administration credit for actually for once in their history so far making the correct decision. We are not going to uh, put a no-fly zone over Ukraine. We are not going to defend the U Ukraine airspace. Why? Because literally what that would have is U.S. troops then shooting down Russian planes. If you want to start World War III, that's a real good way to do it. So for the idiots like Adam Kinzinger, use your freaking brain. Whoever advised Joe, because obviously Joe can't think that far, thank you. Because maybe you did your teeny tiny little thing to keep us all from glowing. I got a lot to do, guys. It's 1st of March, and it's time to get... Peas going. My peas are about ready to be put in the ground. And we'll see what happens throughout the day. But uh, that's kind of what's going on this morning. We'll see you all this evening. And we'll out.